Uh, and ideally, if that works, it makes it one better for the kids and two better for the club. Yeah. Uh, it also gives us continuity across the club. So this is the stuff that Steve and I have been using. Steve's going to jump in whenever you, whenever I do stuff. This is what we've been using uh, for three years together now. We, I used it four years ago as well. And candidly, it's so fundamental, it's so easy. Uh, other teams can't score on it. It just, uh, it just doesn't happen. And it's awfully hard to lose a game. This is all about winning and losing. But it's awfully hard to lose when you're giving up one and two goals a game. Unless you have kids have sleepovers and before a game. But other than that, it's, uh, <laughs> Other than that, it was, it's, it's really simple. The basic assumption here, really to put this into perspective the way I learned it, this is the Princeton defense. And the Princeton defense assumes that you have athletes on defense that are not as good as the athletes on offense. And so you cheat every chance you can on defense. That's all you're trying to do. You change the control of the game so that you now force them to play offense where you want them to go. And it makes it easier to double team, it's easier to control everything. It starts with one-on-one -on -one defense. So one-on-one -on -one defense, I'm a firm believer. Everything starts with your feet on defense. I can't tell you how many teams we face this year that everything is with their stick. It's all with your feet. If, you're, if your feet and your body's in the right position, you're 80% done. Which means you've got to be able to have good footwork, spend time. I see you guys doing this a lot before practice. Get their feet going. Learn, get them to learn how to do an approach. Get them to learn how to turn and run with a guy. If they can learn that stuff and just make it muscle memory for them, when they get to a game defensively, whether it be a mini or a long stick, it's easy. So you approach them uh, with the defense. When they, with your feet in the ready position, and you're ready to run with the, the, the attack or the offensive play. So that's step one. The next part is, Lose the stick checks. We have this theory, we've never proved it, that every time you try to slash a kid, you lose a half a step. And if you're getting beat, it's because they're sitting there chasing them with their stick, and the kid's just running by them. So that if you can just keep your body, almost like girls lacrosse, I think, I don't know girls lacrosse, but if you keep your body in between theirs and the net, then you're going to be in good shape. Keep my hands you can. Yeah, so the, the final part is with your hands, is you get your hands out 6 to 12 inches apart, and you're riding them down. As they go to shoot, you get your, the head of your stick onto their bottom hand, and all you're trying to do is disrupt their shot, disrupt their pass, whatever they're trying to do. It stops the slashes. So if your kids are taking slashing penalties, this gets rid of it all together. Because we teach no slashing, we teach using your feet, running with them, riding them into the area that you want, and then gluing their hands. Now the three concepts, feet, ride with them, and then hands. Okay, so that's the basic of individual defense. Then it gets to the team defense. So we're gonna give you some charts here. I'm going to put X at the top, uh, and I'm going to, I want you to pretend that there's a line that goes from cage to cage right down the middle, the middle of the field. Everything that we do is about taking away the middle of the field. The other thing that you need to know is we draw this imaginary box, this isn't the scale, that goes, and this is the very first practice we do with it. It's kind of 10 yards out, 12 yards deep. 20 yards across and back up. So it's kind of a rectangle, I guess. Uh, we call that the paint. And when I say this in the very, in the very first practice to the, to the kids. All bad things in lacrosse happen in here. That's where all goals are scored, especially at the youth level. They're not shooting 100 miles an hour from 20 yards out and scoring. Maybe at U15 there's a couple of kids that can start doing that. But man, at U13, U, U11. So we say to them, we ask everything outside the paint. Goalie saved that. Everything inside the paint, the defense saves that. We just don't give up those shots. And it really gives your goalie a lot of confidence knowing that he's not going to be getting jacked with a 60 mile an hour shot three feet in front of the net. So we protect everything in the paint. So when you get those two concepts, you've got the, what we call the rhino line or the middle line, and then you've got the paint going around it, everything is about taking that away. So we'll assume a mini down here has got the ball. And we're playing defense on them. It's all about your feet. Hey, Doug, can I stop here for a second? Yeah. So the Rio line, we call it, got that from Hogan. The paint, these are concepts we want every coach to use. I know everybody probably calls it the hole or the hat or the bucket, whatever. The they island. Learn. The island. Island. Island is a specific part of the paint. It's five and five. But we want everybody to start using that because we say, hey, guys, get to the Rio. Ooh, I don't know if you're 
you're talking about. And then you gotta re-explain it every year. So we would, I would, we would like everybody to use the same, same term. Yeah, so, so you'll hear a lot of our defense's language that we use with them, and we want the defense talking, and that's some of it. So, many, right up. R-Y-D-O, who knows where it came from, Hogan used it, we will answer that somewhere. All right, so we're approaching this. The, the, the MIDI, the defensive player comes up, we want them literally playing, taking away the right. Yeah. And Michael, how are you? Come on up. I don't have a stick, we don't need one for this. A lot of our defensive drills, the defensemen don't have sticks in their hands. We're trying to get them not to slash. If the cage is that way and Mike's got the ball up here, and I'm approaching him, we want to approach to where the stick is. I want to force him so that now I am up this far up, feel him on his back hip, and he's dodging that way. So you're going to flip over, switch hands, there you go. I'll be on his back hip. I want him to go this way. And this will all become big later on. I'm not going to let him come across the top, because when I go to that slide guy that's going to come from the middle, he automatically knows where the slide is coming from. This is the first part of the cheating. The other thing that happens is the further, thanks Mike. The further he gets down into here, to, in order for him to get a good angle shot, he has to bring the stick back across his body, and he gives it to the defenseman. And so it's really easy to do it, to, to, if you do it, to check the stick, to check it from that point. Or he's taking a terrible, terrible angle shot from the goal line, right-handed on this side. He's never going to score. So the first part is, you force him down the alley, as we call it. We want this guy coming down in this direction. All right, so here come the terms, and this is all in the document that will be on the site. The terms that they need to know, they're either, defensively, they're either on ball, one away, or two away. That's all they need to know. And I tell the kids that if you forget what you need to do, just start saying, I'm one away, I'm, I'm, two, I'm two away, I'm on ball. Because as soon as you say that, it gets to be really, really easy. So this guy is obviously on ball. <coughs> if we just go into a simple 2-3-1 offense, or 1-3-2, depending which way you want to go. But this is not to scale. But there's our offense. One away is going to be the first pass away. And the guy that's playing defense on them is going to be, we like to have them press out a bit, but they're close enough that they can easily defend them. But the big thing we want them to do is take away that long pass. So they're in the outlet, they're in the lane, take it away the skip pass. We're going to force them to play around the outside, not give them those easy looks. Sure, is your one-way playing deny or playing off just like Depends on the situation of the game. Right, so early in the game, you know, we'll have them, depending on where they are in the field, as this guy gets closer to him, he'll start moving up to him and pressure him. The flow, the flow ball side, and, and their main, main job is take away skips. Got it. Take away This guy is also one away. So we've got two guys calling one away, and what he'll end up doing is he'll be kind of in this space, taking away that skip pass, but close enough to defend him. Essentially, everybody else is going to be two passes away, or more. So, two passes away. You get one defender on this guy. Let's get rid of this paint line. So, so the paint is 12, up to 12 yards. Right? So, 10 and 12. So, you, you're playing out to the top of the box, so depending on the Depending situation. where it is. Again, this isn't the box. The box is 15, but yeah. The box is 18. It's, 20. it's, it's 20. the 30, and the, the thing's on the, on the 10. On the 10. That's, my, that's my question. How do you get a U11 kid? Station. That's too far off. Yeah, so a U11, you can pull them back in. Back down to here if you want. Right. Yeah, the just in your space, like. And I, this isn't the scale. I highly doubt this guy would be standing in the field. Well, we mostly we here. mostly play on football field, so right. if they're within 15 yards yeah. and the hashes, that's about the hash the hash marks and the, the, the you know like, what is it the 25 or the, 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 the 20 is the, the 20 is your danger. Point. You're you're trying to play too aggressive at the point, so way yes. up high. You know, you know, so this is go go away farther than the box. Like basically we're playing five, six yards in from them. What I what I would try to say is get, get as far in as you possibly can while still covering this cover. Cheat as far in as you can, because you're gonna help here. Because as soon as this guy passes down to here, this guy becomes two away. So now he's gonna start moving. So start cheating. On your question on where, when to start playing the guys, you have to assess your talent. I mean if if we like to press out, guys got a ball we want. We want our philosophy is heavy ball pressure. Okay. We want we want kid. We believe we're stronger, and we want to put pressure on the offense. We don't want them carrying the ball around. We want them to work for every pass. So we put heavy ball pressure on. If you don't have the athletes, and maybe we're weaker, maybe you do want to pull them in and, and let them let them dance around out there. All right. So they've got a, they've got a, a video right on the crease here. 
Ball is up there. We have a defenseman with on this side of it with his stick touching him. And his butt is what we call butt to the sideline. So this is the cage. There's a defender there. I get my butt to the sideline, touch him with my stick, and my head is on a swivel back and forth, back and forth. Now, if you go back to where I was up top, I am already, say, three to five yards upfield to my slide. Whereas a lot of the guys will stand behind them. Right. Right? You are so far behind on the slide, you're never going to get there. That guy's going to dodge right down here and jack a shot from right in there. So if he's there to meet him at the paint, this guy's probably a little further down. It's three to four steps, even for a UL kid, to get there and double team. All right? The other two, this defenseman would be on the ball side, above the goal line. I joke that it's kind of, for, if he's on the ball side, just outside the, the post. And this one will be post side, lined up, lined up with the post side. Okay, he's upside down. Uh, will be post, and he's already in, in case he has to fill in for his line. So, so we use <clears throat> the ride on line a lot. It defines the ball side. And then, then <clears throat> not ball side. So we constantly tell the kids, butt to the ball side sideline. That slide guy's got to have his butt to the ball side sideline. We, we, we always tell the kids, define what side of the field you're on, ball side or not ball side. So the other, the other term I've heard here works, works, you get your butt to the sideline or you're in the six shooter spot, right? You're ready to look at the guy, you got six shooters, you're out, and you see this guy and that guy, and this guy and that guy, and this guy and that guy, and you're always looking. So it's an easy way to get younger kids to understand. All right, so now we've got the terms. One, we've got on ball, one away, two away. Now we've got to teach them who's going to be sliding, because we don't know who's going. Whoever's guarding the crease guy, we slide always from the crease. Ideally, that's where we want to go. So this guy, nonstop, is yelling, I'm hot, I'm hot. He's the slide guy. So he's ready to go. Now everybody on the team knows this guy's going to go and slide, and hopefully by this point, they realize when he goes, He's not, if he's all the way over here, this guy's left wide open. So, this guy, this is why you go in here, he's now guarding, he slides, this guy to cover him, it's easy. He's two steps away, he's already there. Make sense? So you've got someone who's hot. If you get into an offensive situation where they go into a triangle motion offense or somehow this guy rotates and they just do this, your hot guy can change all the time. You don't, you're not hot for the whole series. If your man leaves, all of a sudden he's over here and they rotate in, there's a new defenseman who becomes hot, who gets the ball side, gets the butt to the sideline, and starts watching man and ball, man and ball, man and ball, nonstop. Make sense? All right. In an ideal world, they dodge down the alley. He hits the, he hits the paint. When he hits the paint, the slide has to meet him at the paint. If he meets him, if he starts leaving when he gets to the paint, by the time he gets there, this guy's in dangerous shooting position. Which means he's got to start sliding when that guy's back here. <coughs> so he goes, and when he slides, the term we teach is really simple stuff. I'm left or I'm right. So if there's a, a defender forcing him down the alley and I'm coming this way, I'm left, I'm left. He now says, I'm right, I'm right. And we now take them, and he cannot get between us. <coughs> and we take the two of them, and the slide, the double team continues only as long as they're in the paint. I'm trying to force them back out. If, they go, if the guy turns and runs, the double team is off, and I'll tell you what to do in a second. If the double team, if the guy keeps trying to go through it, then we tell them to get really aggressive with their hands, get on their guy's hips, and take them and launch them off into the, you know, as far as they'll, they can run them. Keep, we want him out of the paint. That's the biggest part about it, is that I'm left, I'm right. So the, the things that can release the slide, he passes out of it, he turns and runs, or he drops the ball. Right, if he drops the ball, we obviously go for the ball and we're done. The slide work. When you're sliding, they're not going for the big hit, they're going to make contact and move the guy. Yeah, it, it, we, we don't teach them to crush guys. We never teach that, especially at the <coughs> level. But we are teaching them, the big thing that you don't want them to do is chase the ball. Because right? Right? if they go for the ball with their stick and the guy slips through, then the slide is useless. The bigger thing is to force them to, to take them where you want them to go. I think at the youth level, you can pretty much where most of these kids teach them to be as aggressive as you want, and you'll be safe. I think we suffer from kids that are not that aggressive. And if you really want to teach it, you want to give them to do it with stubbies or no sticks. Works really well. Gets them to come with their hands and stops them chasing the sticks. That's also, I think, uh, you've got to judge who you're playing. Yeah. 
And if you think you can, if you think you can double and stay on it and cause a turnover, yeah. then we'll, 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 we'll say stay. We'll use you stay. But if we if we think we're against a team pretty good, we will release early. And so as soon as he's out of his dodge yeah. and not attack anymore, then then we recover. Gotcha. So we recover early. And that's the slide guy's got to communicate that. It's either stay yeah. or find him. Stay or find him. So here are the terms we teach. I'm, I'm one, or I'm one ball, I'm one, I'm two, I'm hot. There's slide, fill, and recover. Okay? This guy is a slide guy. He's filling in for him, which is also known as a second slide. And then recover happens when the slide is over. So we get the double team, we come up. When the double team ends, ideally the guy who slid would say this, but I'm alright with anybody saying it. As long as somebody says it, find one. They either say one of two things. Find one or stay. And just tell them to insert the word you in front of it. But to be faster, you just leave it off. So if I come and I say, find one, find one, find one, the guy that's now on the right would turn and go straight back to the crease. He would run straight to literally that where I came from. If I say, stay, 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 he stays, and I turn and I go straight back to the crease. And they gotta run. This is the biggest, the hardest one to teach. We get kids to turn and walk back. They gotta sprint back to the crease. Because as soon as they get back to the crease, this defenseman who filled in will now say, find one or stay. It's the same language. And if he says, find one, that defenseman is saying, I got the crease guy now, you gotta go find the open guy. You can use your point, point to where the guy is. Or he says, stay, and that means that defenseman's now gonna go find this other guy again. You know the goalie dictating the rules? Or no. The goalie's got enough on his mind. All I want the goalie to do is tracking the ball and calling where it is for our defenseman. Okay, that's, and he may call it defensive formation throughout as they get more on. Okay? Alright, the only other area, uh, and then I'm going to give you, let me know if I'm in, I've got a whole bunch of notes here for you guys. But, um, there's only one other area that this gets harder. When they attack from X, we'll call this the Ryan Emerson move. Um, this is where defense changes. Now, top side becomes the goal line extended. We want to keep them below this. So the goal, top side is no longer the right arrow. The top side is here. And you are playing defense to keep him behind the goal line because as soon as he gets in front of the goal line, bad things happen. So there, I'm going to teach you what I think is the fundamental way of lacrosse. It's failed for us every season we've tried to do it, and I'll tell you what, I, what we're doing to, to, make, to accommodate it. First one is, when you've got a defender on him, he's playing whichever way, ideally, this defenseman's smart, He's going to force him to his weak hand. But if he doesn't have a weak hand, he's playing Ryan Emerson, he's going to play him and be well, willing to go both directions. The ideal scenario is as he starts to dodge, this defenseman turns and takes a shortcut and closes the door. And he forces him off. Now, what we want to do is actually force him back into the crease. And there's two reasons for that. One, remember this is an out of bounds line. So the area just got really small on them. But two, where do we slide from? We slide from the crease. So this guy is now ball side. It's a shorter slide for him to come up right to there. This is the one that kills us for two reasons. One, this guy never slides early enough. And we have to get this top side mini, who would now be down here, to fill in all the way down to there. And that's the one we always miss. That kills us. And that's at every level we've seen it. So one of the other things you can teach if you discover that as a problem, as he gets up here, you force him back into the corner. That's a, that's a good compromise that most youth guys use. And if you need to, you can let him get all the way around the outside up this way and start to take top side up here. But don't give him the middle of the field. That's where bad things happen. So if you get beat underneath, you can teach him that. I'm still the United Are you guys, are you 11, 13, 15? Are, you, are we like scorpions across the board, no zone defense? Are we all man? The younger, the, the worse it can be. Basically, I don't think you should use a zone until high school. As far as developing kids, you know, if you're prioritizing winning over developing kids, I think we're good right we're sending the wrong message. So okay. that's just my own personal thing. Zones work, they work in basketball, they work, they work, they're very effective. They don't help defensemen develop their, their skills. But you have to have the you have to have the lax IQ, you have to have the communication, you have to have that ability to be. That's what we want to teach them. Right. Right. So you start them early. Yeah. And that's so remember my first comment was we want to start with you and I. They're not gonna get this. Yeah. They're gonna lose games. Yeah. Who cares? Right? But by the time they come to U11, now all of a sudden it's become easier for them. They've heard it for a year. By the time they get to U13, they now get this. 
And then you can really get into the advanced stuff by the time they hit U15. Now they're ready for high school. Yeah, I would absolutely really, I really caution that with, because uh, again, I've coached competitive and I've coached recreational. What you're talking about, you know, and again, there's a right way to do it and not, because this, this thing totally falls apart for a lot of 11, 13, B, C players when it goes behind the cage if you're not teaching yes. them how to adjust. But for the coaches here who are coaching Bs and kind of the C level beginner guys, um, you really have to dumb it down because they do not have a lacrosse IQ. You teach them this shit, they're lost. So take the fundamentals that are being taught, like Steve was saying, and then apply that as best as you can for the kids. And even U15, you know, B kids that are kids don't, don't, you know, don't, you yeah. don't understand the whole, the whole concept of, you know, you know, your butt to the side and whatever, it, it is just really unfamiliar to not experienced players unless they've been doing it over and over again. So, so I would just I, really, you know. You can't um, give this to them one practice. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Where did I start with? Yeah. Individual defense, right? You gotta play with your feet. I'd start with that. If you're starting with that, that's critical. Once the kids get good at individual D, then you start to introduce the next concept. No, I'm, I'm just talking about your, your setup here because well, by without, the end, without sticks is probably one of the most effective things to do with a player who's on defense and a midi Middies, yes. you know, as well. And Mike, just one thing: um, make sure you know on a man down, you um, you do play zone. Okay, because so, I've heard people go, "Oh, like man, 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 man down." Oh yeah, yeah. So, Which, I, I, are you nine? So, and I'm just trying to understand yeah. the, the progression spectrum because I, you know I'm not I haven't been here as long as the other guys, so I want to make sure that we're putting it because like you know we. I think you nine. You just like, what you want to do is try to tell them their job is to take the ball away, where they're chasing them around yeah. with the chicken. I'm just trying to get them to watch hips, stay between the guy and the cage. That's all. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know what you're saying is, makes perfect sense. You know, as you you grow into that next level. Yes. But if you're going to put something on the website, I think so do it in steps. That's the intention. You know, you so you nine focus on this. You eleven focus on this. You thirteen. Well, I will say yes. If we start, start, I have struggle. I have struggle with warm. Cold and hot. Term terminology <laughs> makes sense. Yes. I understand how they say terminology is not cold. That makes total sense. So they can say the same word all the time. I, so I've come and watched other games, and I've coached everything from C teams to B teams and A teams. And I put this defense in, and it works. You can't do it all in one day, it takes time. But if you teach them the basics of all bad things happen in the paint, they play basketball, yeah. we're going to take away the paint. That's a pretty simple concept to do. How do we do it? I'm going to force them down the alley. All right. And then you get them to go off field and do it and just run with them. All right, I just got 90% of the battle then. Right. It all starts with individual defense. You don't, if you play individual tough defense, there's never a slide. They're, they're running back and forth, up and down the alleys. I, I, the, the value comes long term, too. I mean, I, I talked to Steve midway through the year this year about my frustration with the middies. The, the polls adapt to this rapidly. In fact, they all love this theory sure, because it makes it. sense to them. It's the middies. Getting the middies to commit to not just standing between the cage and your man. And actually, it, it's unnatural for them at first to, 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 to accept that you're, I'm going to give that guy a, a view of the cage. No, you're, if you're doing this right, you're carrying that guy right into double coverage without him getting it. Right? You know, and, and you know, so, so you know, my friends, you know, Don does this thing. You know, there's some box skills that, that these guys teach, and that's why they're doing no no sticks with, uh, with a lot of these guys with their footwork. If they get their hands together on a hip, you don't have to hit anybody. You don't have to knock their stickers. You get on their hip, and you start taking them the direction you want to take them. And then the nice thing is, as your U15s and 13s get that six foot pole in their hand, when the guy starts to spin on you. Especially as he's going to his favorite side, his right hand side, and you're a right hand pole, he's spinning right back into the strike of your stick. He's not going anywhere. Right? It's just my frustration this year is getting the middies. Come on, guys, you're killing the poles because you're not covering your man and you're not sliding. You get one guy or two guys to slide. You don't get six guys to slide and start covering, right? And, it's, and it falls apart at the middies. And that, I think that's where we got to start reinforcing this. Really, really, really early. So I'll tell you two things that I've noticed in watching our games as a club that I've noticed in the past couple years. The number of slashing penalties we take, way too high. We gotta get that out of the game. 
Uh, it's just a, like it's just a, 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 a gross ran on the cross. I don't want to watch that. It's awful. So we got to get fix that. So that's number one. The other thing that I would say as a, dip, as a defensive coach, playing defense, you got to work a hell of a lot harder than you do in the playoff decisions. You got to be tired by the time you're done with it. And that, to me, is where these guys get lazy. They just start standing around on D. And you got to start teaching them that defense is an active position. It's not where you just put little Johnny because he's no good. Go hide back there. We're going to put all our stars. Defense, take pride in it. This is hustle. Yeah, we're going to be done soon. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Same question, or, or, or maybe a, a tip. Because I played midfield in college, D1. Yeah. There's a term that you probably want to use, which all of us have used, is, is the funnel. You want to funnel them down the side. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are using ride, we say push, force. force. We say we want to force them. We, we use force without the alley. If you want to use a common term throughout, sure. funnel would be a good one because that's right away it gives them the idea of taking an alley, pushing them down, funnel it to a side, yeah, funnel to a side. Where did you play? I played at Syracuse. See, this is a problem. These guys are freaking Maryland, and they like to use these. We're pretty East Canadian. Yeah, but funnel to me is an inward thing, and I don't want anybody funneling in towards my goal. We force out. We're going to use Simon for you. You want to funnel them down the side. And have you guys considered Jason slides if you can't do coma slides? All right, so here's the there's the one caveat. They'll learn that in high school. There is one type. Again, you're moving up. Uh, if they go into a circle offense, then we will do a, we'll do adjacent slides. It's the only time we're really doing it. But, but that's really not needed. Yeah. At the youth level, if you're sagging in that two away, you should still be able to have a slide. But I think, you know, what, what Phil said and at U9, I mean, if a couple of concepts we want them to learn, we want them to take weight top side. We want them to know what the paint is. Right. And we, and we want to know, you know, where your man is and the ball is at all times. So some, I forget, some of you nine coach had it, where he was giving out like, points or stickers for the kids who always knew where the man and ball was. They're always done, you know? So he's like, where's your man and ball? And the other thing is, if, 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 if you have weaker kids, you, you have to be able to defend the ball. So you have to be able to at least teach them technique on the ball, taking away top side, and, and kind of sit down on a GLE and put them to that corner. So um, we, we, we take sticks away, we practice that at least once a week. Just technique on how to defend goal line, how to defend from a wing dodge, how to defend from a top dodge. With no sticks, we do it all the time, even if we just do it for five minutes. We're constantly going back to square one and then going back up. Coach, so. that's, that's to me the most critical thing is the footwork on defense. And, and again, techniques, um, I used to bring a little basketball, a, a, a small size ones, and we, we let the kids play. You know, because you know, we make the defenseman play without a stick. And, but then, then you introduce something else, just a, like a, maybe a little mini football or whatever, and you just watch the same techniques you're teaching. Of course, they forget once they get a stick in their hand, but you know, that, that's a really good, effective technique. But we, we don't want chasing sticks, even though it's effective against weaker teams. Run to the sticks out of them and then knock the stick. They love it, they'll do it. We, have, we try it, but it's very, very hard. And so we have to look all the kid off. I'm going to say, like, if you have like a, a little football or something that they can catch, especially if the weaker kids. <laughs> This is very easy because it teaches them footwork without them even knowing. Because they got to stick with the guy, they got to look at the hip. But the, the, second, the second, biggest, second biggest problem I see when I watch games, watch at U11 all the time, kid slides, wide open on the crease. It's never, it's yeah, right. slide is never a fill guy. Lacrosse IQ. We, we as, a, as a program, I, I, yeah, we got we to solve that because they're really dudes open on the crease all over. Do you have minis that don't come in to take? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a season long. We are basically yeah. coaching for the playoffs. It's a battle. Yeah, it's a battle because we have the weakest defending midfielders in the day. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We have the So, I mean, the only other thing I would say is, so this, my son plays at the, the high school with a couple of these kids that, and the defense gets no rep, no love, right? If they do everything right, the offense scores. If they do anything wrong, the other team scores. It sucks. Get used to it. Right? It does. <laughs> so one of the things that the high school that we may, we may do next year that I love, SRV does it, is the night before every game, the goalie has a feed the defense party. And he's feed, he, like, do everything to reward your defense. Pick them as the player of the game as often as you can. The offensive guys, they get all the goals. They get plenty of recognition. We had t-shirts made for them last year saying, uh, uh, they love them. Offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. 
Like Stuff you, like you include your short stick mini. Yes. Oh, Anyone that plays defense. So depending on we. Everybody. Well, so we. Yeah. We have short stick defensive minis. I, I know when I'm attacking, should be riding and stuff. But they get plenty of attention. It's the guys that don't get attention that we try to single out. So it just will work. Just following up, trying to understand again the progression of. I mean, what, what levels are you guys starting to go position specific within Scorpion so that, you know, just looking up the chain? We, we don't, we try not to, but about <laughs> around a U13 level, the kids start. They start to 13, gravitate. Right? They start gravitating. So U11 should still be everybody yeah. plays okay. everywhere. Uh, but even at U11A, we have kids who just like to play defense. Okay. They, they, you know. And don't forget, the primary goal that we should be doing here is preparing these kids if they want to play high school across. Yeah. And if they're going to go in and play long stick in high school, and they want to start that at 13 or 15, then I'll love them. But we get games where we rotate people around and they don't. <laughs> yeah. Like we get Casey coming up and say, I don't want to go on offense. Just leave me a long stick. I want to be back here the whole time. So when, uh, when do you start long stick? 13, right? Uh, uh, that's yeah, yeah. they have 54 inch, 54 inch stick, so if a kid looks like he can handle it and he, want, he wants to use it, they really kind of, if they really want to use it, I'll let them in. Just give them the load. Let me enter that one thing, because this is important. On our teams, you have to earn the right. Hold on, listen up. This is important. You have to, on our teams, you have to earn the right to use a long stick. So we've got a newer player this year. He's, uh, he's a defenseman, still playing with a short stick. I will not, it's a huge mistake to let a kid who doesn't they have any stick skills go to a long stick. You're absolutely right. They get lazy with it. So they, they, have to, they have to pass the test before they can go to a long stick. What's the test? Until I feel like good enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold test. <laughs> 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 All right, Donald, thank you very much. <laughs>